We are live. Is there, are we live? Okay, perfect. Okay. Hi, everybody. This is Karen Newman, and this is the Saturday Human Colony or Hukalo webinar. I will be channeling today um, myself. Um, just to let you know who's in the room, we have Stephanie, Salish, we have Alex on the controls, and then we have Christine. So before we get started, I thought we'd do something a little different because we're coming up to the end of the year. Uh, we just had the summer solstice on the uh, just two days ago, and that's also a symbolic of, you know, and it's also an energetic time of closing down old things and now getting ready to move into rebirth and, and new. And this has been 2017, I think for many people, being an eight year has been a year of finalization of a lot of uh, stuff that has to be cleared out. So next year, 2018, which is just a little bit over a week away is gonna be a time of renewal. So I just wanted to talk to everybody um, before, you know, and find out before we start channeling, just to find out where everyone is, what their challenges have been this year. I'll talk a little bit about my own and, and uh, yeah, if anyone's in the YouTube chat, you're free to type something. If you want, you can go to the Human Colony page um, and there's plenty of uh, room in the room. So if you've never been in the Google Hangouts, now's your chance to come in. So we've got some spaces open. We'd love to have you, you go to hukalo.org. And before we start, just to tell you, there's a few announcements. Uh, this is Human Colony. We do have a paid subscription. So if you would like to always have a space in the room, always be able to talk to a channel, channel or live, you can join, become a member for $10 a month. It gives you access to everything that's happening at Human Colony, including classes and things that we do. And then there's also something coming up called the Ascension Workshop. It'll be in Sedona, Arizona from February 1st to the 6th. The cost is $278 down, $278 at the door when you get there. And it's five days of Max and Jim and also Jonathan C. Martin. They'll be working on galactic Reiki channeling, telepathy and everything that has to do with walking your spiritual path. And it'll be a really nice get together so if you feel inspired, please check it out. That's also on humancolony.org. And then for myself, next week, I'm very excited to announce I'll be taking part in the channel panel. And that will be in Burbank, California on December the 30th, which is Christmas, not Christmas, it's New Year's Eve Eve. And there'll be about nine different channelers, including Rob Gothier, Daniel Scranton, Sean Swanson, Nora Harold, Wendy Kennedy, Lee Harris, myself, Kalina Angel, and the big one that's going to be there is Daryl Anka, Daryl Anka, Daryl Anka, who channels Bashar. So if you want tickets, they are at thechannelpanel.com. There's only a small limited number of seats left, but it'll, it's going to be a wonderful day. There's a lot of people from Human Colony that are going to come out there. So I'm very excited to meet everybody that's coming. And yeah, if you can, please, please show up. So who's that that just came in the room? Alex, hi, Alex. <laughs> he doesn't answer. So, okay, to get started, I just wanna talk, and I've got my dog Tommy back here. I'm being supported by animals. I got a cat beside me. There's another dog running around here somewhere. So if you hear barking or meowing, don't, don't be disturbed, so. So anyway, so I just wanted to start this um, year this, this webinar by talking about um, challenges of this year. For myself, um, it's, been, it's been a very dualistic year. It's been incredibly challenging, but at the same time, incredibly rewarding, like in a paradoxical way, whereas financially, I've had the biggest challenges I've ever had in my life. And at the same time, I've had the most wonderful experiences of abundance that I've ever had in my life. Sort of at the same time, being absolutely devastatingly broke, but at the same time doing things that cost, you know, cost a significant amount of funds and, and needed to have abundance. And, and I was experiencing them both at the same time. And it was um, a lot about really trusting and, and understanding what abundance meant in terms of having 
what you needed at the moment that you needed it and trusting that it would show up. And even, I mean, you, I would, I can tell you that like, there would be moments where I would say, I don't have this or I need this and the next second it would be there. And it, there was no fathomable way to understand how it really showed up. So I spent a lot of time just being grateful. And I think that the, the gratitude allowed the abundance because I couldn't fathom how things would work out, but they just did. And they would, they would, I think in some ways the universe made me wait till the very last second before something would work out just to test my resolve in trusting. I don't know how else to say that, but does anybody else have any challenges that they experienced this year? Stephanie, Salish, Christine, anybody, if you want to just jump in. Hi, Salish over here. Hi. Hi, I've had very similar challenges to yours and um, financially. And I, what I'm finding is that um, it's a trust. Yep. And it is a trust that's letting the abundance flow. And what you said about the definition of abundance, I too understand what abundance is now. Yeah. It, it's not the millions sitting in the bank. It's yeah. whenever I need it, it's there. Yeah. yeah. Um, the biggest things that's been happening to me is I gave up smoking three years ago. I started vaping then. Sorry, and at the beginning of the year, va sorry, vaping. Oh, okay. Uh, and on during the beginning of the year, it just so happened that uh, I caught laryngitis, uh, and I haven't vaped, I haven't vaped or done any any of that sort. Because what's been happening is, like for the last ten years, I've seen my addictions been, um, I've been forced into such a corner that it has to leave me. The first or the biggest one was alcoholism, okay, which went overnight twelve years ago. And I was reluctant to give up smoking because I also turned into a vegan. So I said, so I'm not going to be giving up everything. Come on, I'm going like, to have something to do. Right? Yeah. And I didn't want to. And it just so happened that I came back from India on a rescue mission from bringing my uncle back home. Yeah. And I caught laryngitis and uh, that was the end of vaping. And then just about literally a month ago, I lost a revenue of uh, income. It just taken away from me. Yeah, I had to say And now I know why, because that revenue is not sustainable in this new energy. Yeah, yeah. same, exact so same, it's, it's same, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so I'm grateful for that. Uh, my wife doesn't see it that way, but that's fine. Uh, <laughs> that's about it really, and, and I know I'm, something is just waiting for me, I just know that I'm at the edge here somewhere and something's waiting. Yeah. I like this, to see. This... Oh, I don't mean to interrupt you. I just get excited when I start to recognize stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's okay. Go on. No, I was, what I was going to say is that, um, you know, I had, um, I've worked, I've always worked alongside of doing spiritual work. And it's always been a, a question of, you know, do I want to do this as my living or do I want to do something else is my living and I've always tried to combine both of them but it's been very clear over the last years that it was time to sort of let some of the, some things go and just I was working for this I was working for a company in the advertising world in the magazine world and I don't know if anybody knows but in the advertising and magazines magazines are just they're really becoming a thing of the past unfortunately um, because of the internet, because everybody reads everything on the internet, everyone advertises on the internet, so people aren't buying as many magazines, and they're just getting smaller. So a few years ago, the magazine that I was working for was sold, and all of a sudden my job went from being my pure full source of income to not being able to be my full source of income. I mean, it went to being like this, but I kept it, and I and I didn't so I added other things to it and I kept doing it and I thought, okay, this is good. And I got the message that it's really, like you said, it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable in the new energy. It's also not sustainable in this sort of new world we have where we're 
everything is electronic and on the internet and everything else like that. And it's also an industry that I have, I come out of, I love the industry, but it's not the most healthy industry. And I'm talking about the bodybuilding industry, which is great for your physical fitness, but you know, bodybuilders and all those things with all the steroids and all that stuff, that's not healthy at all. And so, you know, and, and I'm, I have been vegetarian slash vegan for many years and even though the people in that world are now starting to embrace that more, there's still just a very hedonistic culture of, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's just not the most spiritual culture. It's just what is what it is. So I have just wanted to move out of it, not because, and also because as I've gotten older, you know, it's not the same as when you're 20 and you want to stand in front of the mirror and flex your muscles and all that. <laughs> You know, so it's just time to move on, but I've held on to it because it's been part of me for so very long. And so the, the magazine went like this, but I held on to it. And the income also went like this. I and mean, we're talking about a pittance, but it was a nice, it was still fun. And I thought, I'm, you know, I'm just going to see if maybe it can be built up again. And I just kept holding on. Finally, just literally a month ago, they just stopped the magazine. There was no warning. There was nothing. And so many things over the last year that I have tried to start that weren't sort of in the spiritual world, they weren't part of my sort of spiritual business, have just failed. And, and not failed, but just like fallen so flat on their face it wasn't even funny. You would think if you looked at me that I would have, I've had the worst luck of anybody in the last several years. But in, in other ways, I've had the most incredible luck. So about a month ago, it just, the magazine ceased, it ceases to exist. It doesn't exist. <laughs> I can't even hold on to it if I want to, it's gone. And when they called to tell me, I just started laughing. I was just like, well, I guess that's it. I guess there's just no, no going back. And I'm gonna, you know, it's not even about trying to get to the place where I can accept it. I mean, there's nothing to accept anymore. It's like it never existed. It's incredible. So it's, 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 it's been, it's, it's a struggle. It's been a struggle for me to say, okay, I'm going to do something different. And yeah. <laughs> I, I'm that it's forced me into uh, a direction which I have been contemplating, but not taking on. Exactly. And, exactly. and I've, I've also looking at the fact that uh, I'm having, I am actually grateful for what i had yeah I'm, and I'm extremely and, grateful for it it's it, it, it's molded me in my life it's been it was a real joy to do at the time that you know when it was thriving and it was extremely fun i i value it so very much it got me to europe it 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 it, it, it has been the facilitator of so much of my life and so i can understand why sometimes you hold on to something that no longer serves you because of your sort of loyalty to it your yeah. inability to understand maybe or to you know maybe want to take the risk to do something different the trust that you know that it's time to jump and and time to go and you know but, but i will say that the reason i bring this up is because one of the things that I'm studying now, and I'm studying mantra and Vedic Sanskrit, uh, well, Vedic, Vedic studies and Sanskrit. And one of the things they talk about in Kashmiri Shaivism, which is the sort of, um, that's the sort of philosophy that I, that I follow. They talk about four levels of speech and that your thought, your word, and your deed they all are aligned together that these that the, the that so that what you say and what you do are the same and it's the struggle to like you said consider something and to actually just really go into it with the knowing of that it's all going to be okay and you're following what you know to be true as opposed to and, and really moving forward into that as opposed to just sort of looking at it going, well, we'll see how much. Sure. And really lining up with it. And, and I've been asking for the, that, that my 
that my word and deed and all these things line up with each other, my work, you know, but sometimes <laughs> I guess I need a little help because, <laughs> you know, you yeah. sometimes you get pushed. You really get pushed. Yes. And, and, mm. But I'm, but I'm appreciative of it. Really. I really am. Like you said, I, you know, you're appreciating and you think, okay, I'm getting the help. It, it may, it may be shocking. It may be, you know, uh, it, but, is, but it is, it is, it is what it is, you know? So yeah. uh, where, are you from India? Where uh, are you from in India? No, um, uh, parents are of Indian origin. I was born in Uganda, East Africa. Oh, okay. And and a lot of I had a, I have a lot of traumas which I'm going through at the moment, especially born in Idi Amin when he came into power and the yeah. atrocities that were committed. I was only ten, twelve years old then. Yeah. But I've been in England, London for the last forty odd years. But I've spent a few years in America, a few years in Spain. Okay. But based in in London at the moment. Parents are Indian origin. Okay. And luckily i'm very blessed that my f parents never forced religion down my throat yeah well religion is so, one thing and spirituality is a whole other thing you know yeah i mean for me it's very simple i'll finish on this so others can come in that i was literally uh kicked uh, and downtrodden uh by whoever higher self x or z it doesn't really matter it's the experience i set for myself that i ended up living on the streets for my alcoholism to be uh, healed, yeah, and well, I had a, a <clears throat> and I had a similar uh, with the smoking. The similarity is there as well. I didn't want to give up smoking, and I had to get laryngitis, and I wish I suffered horrendously for two weeks. Uh, you can't take antibiotics, but anyway, the, the long and the short is that I have learned to listen to my intuition a lot more now and trust it. Yeah. Okay? Is and I prefer to think as of it as, as if knowing. I know. Yeah. That's the realm I'm forcing, moving into, to knowing instead of uh, believing or trusting. Good. It's been very helpful and grateful because you probably see me here every week. I hardly ever talk. In fact, I never talk. Yeah. No, you don't. So it's very nice. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. I will talk about today. Sorry. No, I was going to ask you. Do you? Um, so, how long have you been sober from drinking? Uh, coming up to 12 years now. Perfect. Okay. 12 years. Yeah. And so do you, yeah. do you it, now have any kind of perspective on what that, what that addiction was about? Did you, do have you really kind of found a place for it to or I, leave it behind? I found it. I found it only just a few months ago, a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. It's uh, when I did a bit of uh, shadow healing myself. And it was an incident that a very small, minor incident that happened uh, when Idi Amin was over there. Yeah. The rest of my family uh, had already settled in the UK. It's just myself, my sister, and my parents there. My other two brothers and the rest of the family relatives were here in the UK. Mm -hmm. And it's a very, really stupid, silly thing, right? Yeah. But it had major effects on me. Uh, my sister was sent over here to London just for a holiday, mm -hmm. and I wasn't. And that's where I felt as if I'm not loved. Yeah. And the fact that my parents prefer love all my other brothers and sisters, that they don't give a monkey's about me, X, Y, Z, and it had actually settled in. It's only now I realized that uh, it was because of the lack of self-worth that I was drinking. Yeah. And I have always done my best and hardest to please my family all my life. And worked in the family business for 30 years without pay, X, Y, Z, and big brother has everything. I have nothing kind of, I, I've been through all that. Now I realize that it's got nothing to do with it. It's all to do with my childhood hood traumas, which need to be healed. And I am absolutely loving life at the moment. Well, perfect. So have you worked and, on doing the healing for that? Have you started doing the healing? Because we could do a we uh, meditation, but we could do something if you want, if you're willing. I, I'd be happy to do a, a meditation with you right now where we could really maybe 
to to address a little bit of that if you're really sure i i'm i'm happy to do so yes okay. just so hold that thought how old were you when this sort of sort of manifested for you the first time i you remember i believe I believe it was, I was. It was just after a year, I think, after the Americas landed on the moon. So, nineteen seventy would be yes. Nineteen seventy. Nineteen seventy. I would have been uh, eleven years old. Okay. Okay. When, when, when we're talking to other people, I want you to think about when you were eleven. That feeling. I want you to sort of kind of identify that moment because there's always a first moment where you have that feeling. And that's what we want to go back to. And it's not going to be like a regression, but but what we're going to do is, I, I don't know if people know, and, and Theos does this with people as well. A lot of times in private sessions, um, we I can get Theos to come and do it, or we, we can do it together. But um, when you have a trauma, if anybody has a trauma, and a trauma doesn't always have to be a huge thing. A trauma can be anything when you feel and it's always in your childhood because in your childhood you're very this is monkey you're very uh vulnerable because you're generally not living on your own you're not self-sufficient um you were you are relying on usually your parents for everything for your love for your validation for your food for your well-being and for your safety that is you know, and, and you build your sense of yourself based on how well those needs are met or how well they're not met. And so a trauma is any time that you have been sort of thrown out of your own sense of well-being. Because what happens then is you, one, have the disillusion of not understanding why, and you jump to a lot of conclusions about, oh, they don't love me, they don't value me, because you didn't maybe know what their mentality was, or maybe in fact that was the case. I don't, I, I don't know that, but, but in at the same time, you know, when you talk about parents, parents are imperfect people. They're, they have their own traumas and their own dramas and their own things that make them act and choose to do things. And it's not to justify or say that, you know, that they're not to blame. Everybody has to take responsibility for their own actions. But a trauma is something that happens to us as a person because of whatever. You know, I, I had I had alcoholic parents. They're thankfully recovered and I can empathize with you. Um, I had a lot of that, of the disillusionment of not knowing, you know, safety not because not that they were ever gonna they never hit me thank god or anything like that but just that unknowing of, of what was going to happen next or if everything was going to be okay if if they were going to be awake if they were going to be happy if they're going to be sad if they were going to be yelling it, you, you never knew and it was a very um, uncertain time as a small child because this is the person that you're looking to for all of the, everything you need you know, so, so a trauma, so what happens is when you have a trauma, there's a part of you that stays in that age. They call it arrested development in psychology, but I would just say it's more like a piece of you gets blocked. And then everything that follows after that in your growing up and in your development sort of in th there's that one space of you that can get stuck there. And then as you get older and hopefully healthier, um, you can go back and let it free. But sometimes it results in, you know, depression or uh, behavior like trying to fill that pain of not understanding why or trying to block it or numb it with drugs or alcohol or whatever that may be. I mean, whatever the the action would be. And so we have the opportunity now, especially as people who are open and, you know, seeking uh, spiritual growth, we have the ability to go back and get that child and let them, let them have a little bit, have the comfort that they needed at that moment. And, and what that does is it sort of brings your 
soul, your fragmented soul back together. And there's many things. I mean, there, I don't think that there's a person on the planet that doesn't have something that they have to heal because that's part of our experience. It's, it's going through these growth phases and then being able to go back. But we also have the ability as multidimensional beings to change our past and change our future. So in meditation and in visualization, we can do those things. So I'd like to do it with you. And if there's anybody else that has anything they want to share about maybe the challenges they've had this year, and if they can relate them back, I know that like for my thing, I have a, I have a real need for, um, I have a real need for security only because I think as a child, everything wasn't secure. So for me, like having a house, having a place to live, I mean, I, I know that's the same for a lot of people, but, but there's some people don't care. They can just, you know, wing it and be really, ah, you know, we'll see what happens, but I am not like that. I, I really want to know. Like if I'm gonna go somewhere in three months, I've already got it all planned out. I know exactly where I have to go. I know exactly what I have to do. And some people think that's organized. For me, it's more like it gives me peace of mind. If I don't have that peace of mind, and that just comes back to, I know the uncertainty of day-to-day -day stuff. I am so planned out. I can tell you everything I'm doing <laughs> to me now. <laughs> and six months from now, which may be a little bit rigid, but I know it goes back to that. And I know that um, some of the insecurities that I had around money or finances that maybe maybe hold too tight onto stuff that I could have let go on are also related to stuff from when I was younger. So I'm also trying to do that healing. So that's why I think it's a good idea to do it. And then when something comes up in you and you start to have a feeling like, whoa, what is that? What you can do is you can literally go back to the first moment, because if you really let yourself sit with it, you can find that first moment because that's the trigger. And then, because a lot of times if you're having a discussion with someone and they get triggered by you and they start getting upset, it's usually not anything you're doing. It's what it's bringing up in them. And that's or what it's bringing up in you as well. When you start to get upset about something or it's usually what, what's going on in you. And if you can really go back and find that first moment and then do like what, what this exercise we're gonna do where you go back to your inner child and heal them and comfort them, you start to release some of that stuff. And that's what this next year is gonna be about. This next year is gonna be about cleaning out letting go and getting cleaned up for a much better time. Everything that was, and it's still coming up, but you can see it in the world, all the, all the ugliness, all the you know, hidden stuff is coming up. And we all have not only hidden stuff in society, but we, have, but we have it within ourselves. So now's the time to really just let it out so that we can go into 2018 with a much bigger perspective. So. Christine. Yes. Here. Yeah. What do you, what do you have to say? <laughs> um, you know, I have gone through um, a lot of emotional things where um, other people or different things have been triggering me. Mm, like what? And I'm trying really hard to get into a healing mode. Um, yeah. But because um, I get triggered so much emotionally by other people that I've, um, withdrawn from people so to speak and just want to heal animals but um or i'll heal people remotely but what's really interesting is as this year is ending the very animals that i've been putting my heart into in a rescue uh yeah in a rescue organization well there's a big divorce going on between the founder and the board and animals are being taken out and so on and my two favorite donkeys. Um, I don't know what's going to happen to them. So, what I I've asked for help, and what's from Saint Francis for one. But for myself, what I did was um, when I asked for help, I stumbled across tapping. Oh, okay. 
And does that work for you? And I have a doctorate in psychology. So I've, I've gone through all these various other things, but you know, life gets busy and you forget to use a lot of the tools you, you've learned about. Right. So yeah, the okay. tapping is really working. So because you might have to remind me, but I think it's you will maybe you can lead us in it because it's also good too. <coughs> Do it. I know that it's like here, here, somewhere here, here. Yeah, <laughs> you, have to, you have to lead us, but we'll. But do you that. know it's, Oh, but you know what? Um, I'm not um a rapper, and in a sense, you have to be a person who is verbally can say as you're tapping on your head. Um, you're saying this, and as you're tapping over here, you're saying that, and as you're tapping near the eye, and then under the eye, and then here, and then here. I know the places to tap. It's um, being verbally um, saying the negative things of what you fear, and then you start changing them for things that, but I am going to do this anyway over my fear, you know? That's right. Well, you, you, can also do, they, you can also do that with, you can do it with tapping, but you can also do it with uh, um, your, your hands. Right. You can also, no, 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 not so much, not tapping, but you can also do, you can also do it with, um, they call it the five finger technique, where you can oh. say, where you can say, um, and you can say, for instance, what is it something you're afraid of? Let's just use an example. Or, or I'll, I'll use something maybe I am afraid of, just as an example. I can say, even though, well, let me think of something. Um, <laughs> That's the hard part. Well, I mean, I've, I've got so many things. It's just choosing one, I guess. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay. Okay. Even though... And you use, you use, but one, you, it, the ten, sorry, I call it the five finger technique. It's a 10 finger technique. You start with your thumb and you say, even though I don't know much about uh, doing events, I'm going to, I know that I will find the people that I need to find to help me and I'm going to do it anyway. And I say, and then you repeat it, even though I don't know much about events, I don't know where to find the clients. Uh -huh. I know that I'm going to find the people to help me and I'm going to do it anyway. Even hmm. though, and what happened, and you keep doing that. And, and by the time you get, because it's the limiting belief that you have. Yeah. By the time you get to the 10th finger, it's very hard to remember what the even though thing is you're saying. You, you, your mind, what happens is, it hears the positive. So by the time you get to your 10th finger, you're, the only thing you can really remember very well to say is, I know that I'm going to find the people to help me this. Oh, it's like that telephone game. You know well, where somebody... No, it's, it's more like it's, it's taking a limiting belief that you have and right. eliminating your excuses and your... Uh, things that make you think you can't do something. So, for instance, what is your what is your fear? Losing something or somebody that I love, the donkeys. You know, take okay. Care make make a specific sentence about the donkeys. Hmm. Even though the donkeys. No, no, don't, don't make that sense yet. Make a specific. What are you afraid oh. of? Oh, I fear I'm going to lose somebody that I love. The donkeys, right? Yeah. So what are the donkeys' names? Larry and Louise. Okay, Larry and Louise. Okay. So you're, you're afraid that they're not going to, you're afraid they're going to be moved out somewhere and sent away? Yes. Okay. And why is that a fear for you? Is, is it a fear for their safety or is it a fear that you just won't see them anymore? It's a fear for their safety because um, donkeys are not horses, so they have to eat differently. They have a different um, mental outlook. I mean, there, uh -huh. there's a whole different. And these people, um, they just fluff me off when I tell them, you know, there's a lot more. They're not horses. You know, you're removing horses, 
and you're giving them much richer hay and so on and so forth. So you're saying donkeys are not, uh, donkeys are desert animals. They can't eat rich horse food. Okay. So, so what is it that they need that will make them safe? The donkeys? Yeah. Where do they need to go? Where do they need to be in order for a donkey rescue? Okay. If not where they are now, you know, in the old, uh, okay. so, in the old past. So, the, so the, 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 the belief is that the donkeys are not going to be saved in some way. Yes. So, so the issue, the, the problem is that you're having a hard time finding, is it up to you to solve this issue? It's up to St. Francis. I gave it to St. Francis. Okay, but it's, but, it, okay, but is it within, other than the, the spiritual being that's going to help you, whose job is it in this earth to save these donkeys? The people who are threatening to take the donkeys away. If you come to them with solution, are they going to? I already did. Okay, so are they going to follow it or not? They sloughed it off and said, "We'll talk to the other. We'll talk to the other um, people on the board." But we already got their pen set up, and we already got this and that, and they already lost a horse, a Mustang, um, because they changed its diet to a um, to a domesticated horse. And Mustangs don't have; okay. they can't eat the rich food. They got col got colic and died. Okay. And I'm afraid that's what's going to happen to the donkeys. Okay, but, okay. All right. <laughs> well, 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 there's several things at work here because one is it's not really your job to save them, but yet you have the expertise to try to, to um, have some input. So we have to phrase this correctly. So even though... <clears throat> uh, even though? Even though you are... Well, you're not giving up. Is that correct? You're going to keep. Keep praying, keep putting positive ideas um, and keep taking care of them. I go out there um, five days a week to, you know, clean their pen where they are now and to yeah. uh, take them for walks, to interact with them. You know, I mean, yeah. they've improved physically, you know, during the four years that I've been taking care of them. They've lost weight. Their hooves are taken care of now. Um, okay, so the, uh, so, so the anyway. biggest thing for them is just the diet, <clears throat> Lynn? They're not being put out on the street or... I, I, mm, I don't... It's... Um, I don't want them isolated. If you, okay, but... No, because the they're horse people. They're not donkeys. Okay, so so the, the thing is you want the well-being... The overall of, health. I'm just trying to... I'm just trying to narrow this down. So... Okay. Because we could talk about all the ifs and wins, but this is that doesn't work for this ten finger technique. We gotta get a little more specific. Okay. So even though okay. even though you don't know how um how the how the universe is going to solve this issue. Yes. You are going to continue to be open, dedicated, and um willing to find a solution yes yes but it's and 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 we'll also say that um yes well we can't change the behavior of the people that are in charge yeah so even because it sounds like it because, well, know, because this is a different issue so what has because you have to feel okay and and i will but we're going to pray for the well-being of these donkeys but this is a difficult one because you're not in charge of their well-being and you can't you can't just go get them if you were I'm to come positive. to them well if, if you were to come to them and say there's a donkey rescue that wants them would they let them go i don't know the um these are people who have come in the night and removed horses from the property um, when the volunteers are not there to watch over. I mean, <laughs> they even have a judge who said that they need to close the, th the place down, not 
take courses and set up in another place. So <laughs> I don't know who they're listening to. Okay. All right. I, I don't, you know. well, let's, so let's, let's, we'll go to, even though, even though the, even though that the, 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 the well-being of the donkeys, or, or let's say all the animals. Oh, that's good. Is uncertain at this time. Yes. I will hold the space. And, 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 and let's say, and, and also too, because your certainty also has to be good so that you're not sitting in doubt and in fear because you don't want to pull more of it to you. Yes. So, so basically what we're going to do, we're going to try to eliminate your doubt. Yeah. So yes. even though I'm uncertain and I'm worried about the outcome for all of these animals, I believe that my intention for their well-being will have the desired effect. Yes. Okay. Even yeah. though, yeah, even though I am worried. Okay. About being, so let's do it. Ready? Okay. Fingers. We'll do it together. Everybody do it with her so everyone can hold the space so that we can <clears throat> do some good mojo here. We'll start, you start with your thumb. You're, you're going to go to your other finger. So we'll say it together. Even though I'm, un, this, even though that I'm, I'm worried and uncertain about the well-being of all the animals. Even though I'm uncertain about the well-being of all the animals. I believe, no, no, I, not, I know. I know. That my intention, that the best outcome for them will occur. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Even though I am concerned and worried about the well-being of all the animals, I know. Uh -huh. You have to do it with me, Christine. I can't do it by myself, honey. I'm writing it down because I can't remember it so long. Okay. Uh -huh. Even, Even though, though I am worried about worried the welfare of all those animals. I know. I know. That my intention. That my intention. For their well-being. For their well-being. Will occur. Will occur. Do it again. Even though. Even though. I am worried and scared. I am worried about the well-being of all those animals. Mm -hmm. I know my intention for their well-being will be a good outcome. Okay. Once again. Even though. Even though. Oh, I got to say this 10 times? Yeah. Keep doing it. Okay. Even though. But even though I worry about the well-being of all the animals on the property, mm -hmm. I know through my heart intention that their well-being will be taken care of. Even though? Even though I worry about the well-being of, of all the animals on the property, I know my intention, my heart intention, that they will be taken care of mm -hmm. to the, for their good outcome. I know. See? Even though see, see I worry you about the... No, see what happened? Even, you said, I know. So let's go with that. Let's try and start with even though again. Even, it's harder to okay. say the negative th thing again, right? Even though... Even though I worry about the well-being of all those animals on the property, I know through my heart intention that their well-being will be taken care of. Okay. Well, number oh, seven. again. Even though. Hmm? No. Even though. What do you know? I'm Tell starting with know. the I know. I know that the well-being okay, well, of all know? the animals on that property will be taken care of. Okay, drop the even though. What do you know? I know through my heart and intention that the well-being of all the animals on that property will be taken care of. What do you know? I, I know that the well-being of all the creatures on that property will be taken care of. What do you know? I know that all the creatures on that property will be taken care of. That has to be your focus. Blessed knowing. be. Okay. Yeah, I, that's the knowing. That's the, that's the taking 
what it what this technique does and it's it's it what it does is it forces your mind uh -huh. to focus on what you know what you know what you know what you know so when you start to when you start to have a limiting because whatever you focus on and this is what is so difficult in spirituality in our dualistic world that this is the big learning that we have and the people that do this well are are magic you know to us that you think that they're magic but it's really a universal law whatever uh -huh. you focus on is what you get whatever you focus on is what you get so what do you want your focus bashar says what state of being do you prefer but we're going to shift that saying a little bit. Everything you focus on is what you get. So your focus should not be all the ifs and ands or buts of what could happen if, 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 even though those are possibilities. And, and you can also say that even though it's a possibility that everything for those animals could go wrong, I know that my intention for their well being will occur and what happens is as you work through your 10 fingers somewhere around finger number four it becomes harder and harder to state the ifs and the even those and what you know starts to line up and when you line up and you focus on what you know then that's where your attention goes and where they say where attention goes energy flows make your energy flow there make your knowing that they're going to be fine. You may be the instrument of that fineness for them, but that really doesn't matter. What really matters is that they're fine. What really matters is they get what they need. So your focus, your, your space that you hold for them in your intention is that well-being. And that's what you want. That's what you want to do. So that's, a, so that's an exercise for everybody that if you're ever in a situation where you need to shift to something else, you, you state the, the limiting belief. And the limiting belief is not because it's not real or it's not happening or it's not the reality at the moment, but the, the idea of creating your own reality is not because you're creating something out of nothing because everything is always true. So for instance, there is a timeline. We are multidimensional beings. There is a timeline where everything for those animals is perfect. Everything is exactly the way it needs to be for their well-being. So the way you get from here to here or from here to here, <laughs> however you do it, is from the knowing that you focus upon. And the reason that it's sort of hard for human beings is because there's a great guru. If you ever want to uh, re, uh, listen to a very good uh, guru, his name's Sadhguru, and he's a brilliant enlightened guru. And he says that belief for a thinking person is very difficult because we're too logical. We can see all the, not only can we see all the great possibilities, but we can solve all the negative. And we get, we tend to get drawn to the most negative outcome. The reason that that happens is because the negative outcomes is what we don't want. And we look at those and we think, oh, we don't want that, you know? But instead of really trusting that focusing completely on the positive in a way where you say, I know this is true. And what I would, I, I just felt this, what Theo has just said to me is we're doing a different kind of channeling right now because I'm just listening to them. What they said to me is, it's not so much convincing yourself that it's true. It's knowing that it's true, but you can also say to yourself, I know that there's a reality where this is true. I know it. So I'm going to focus on knowing that that reality exists. I'm going to focusing on knowing that those that 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 intention of their well-being exists so that you don't have to sort of maybe make a big stretch to get there.
So, you know, today, parents, yeah, oh, I'm yeah. sorry. No, 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 go ahead. So what I was going to say is um, I had been working on, because I did believe that um, my thoughts were going in the wrong direction. Yeah. Um, my fears were overtaking me. Um, and even in my dreams. So that's why I went to the tapping to find another alternative to find, um, like in the tapping, I think Brad Yates is who I um, stumbled okay. on or found. Yeah. And um, he's got quite an assortment of different tappings. Okay. Oh, and I just went through the different ones that rang true to um, what might be undermining me on the whole. Yeah. Because the donkeys represent more than just, you know, just that moment or so just that situation. So what do they represent for you then? Um, losing something that I love that I have no um, control, that I believed I had no control over uh, helping them out. And when did that happen what? to you the first time? When did that happen to you? Um, when I was a child. Okay. Um, Do you have a specific moment? Um, uh, yeah. When my, um, I didn't know my parents were going through a divorce. They don't okay. talk to the kids, you know. Yeah. And um, the dog that I had gotten, um, my mother took me to the pound and had me deliver the dog to the pound people. And I went into the back where they were dumping the dog and it was a big cage with all these other dogs in there. And they just dumped my dog on top of that pile of other dogs. Oh. And, um, anyway. <laughs> well, it's, it's a painful moment. And, and, and yes. I think that Salisha says, Salisha has his, you have yours. That's an excruciating moment. And I, I can't, I, I, I share the love of animals that you have. And I, I can't even imagine. So it makes me want to cry to think about it. It's completely. See, and in this case with the donkeys, my fear is that they'll, because they're not into donkeys, um, that they'll just stick them in a pen and leave them there. You know, no interaction, no stimulus, just giving them whatever food, whatever. Because I've been through this um, in my years of working there at the rescue. I've seen different ranch hands and their indifference. I mean, we had, we used to have seven donkeys. Yeah. And I just started taking care of them because I didn't like the way other people. But you still take care of them, right? Now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, not all those others. They found homes for the others, and but one no, died. We're talking about the ones that are there now. Yes, Larry and Louise. I do. But what we want to do, we're going to do a solution, then we're going to go to someone else now because we we talked. Okay. I don't think I'm going to be channeling today. I think this is what we're doing today. I think this is what we're doing. Um, but we're we're going to work on we're going <clears> to <throat> for this next year. We're going to work on that, and we're going to go back in that moment of time for you. But we'll do it in such a way where you're not on the spot or Salisha isn't on the spot. But we're going to do it in a general um, kind of um, meditation because it's important for you to heal that trauma also so that you don't get triggered, like you said, so mm -hmm. that you don't start going into that spiral because you have a very important job when it comes to saving these animals. And you need to be able to shift into that knowing place of well-being quickly. And so we need to get you a little bit more, we need to go get that piece of you and bring that back so that you can just be in kind of like, like, like my mom is amazing, like she's a nurse and whenever anybody is sick, she's like on it, you know? If you call her and like, I've got this, she's like, you know, she's, she's on it and she just, and that's what you need to be able to do. You need to be able to just get down to the business of what needs to be done. And you will find resources. I, 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 I know it because of your dedication, you will find the resources and the ability to convince the people. And also with your intention holding, you will have a positive outcome. I, I know that for you. So we're going to, we're going to go to the next person, but hold that thought of yourself. Thank Stephanie. You. Thank you. You're welcome. Stephanie, are you there? Yes, well, I'm here. So 
and you're listening to all of this, is there is there anything that you want to maybe look at for setting intention for next year and really um, letting go of? Um, actually, I'm looking forward to the meditation that you're going to do about healing the inner child. Okay. So I'm happy okay, well, to kind of stand it down for that. Do you have a, Do you have any specific thing within you that you say? Like when you listen to you, does anything come up for you that you think, okay, this is something that I know I need to maybe focus on or? Not, not for me in particular, but I think um, that that process or that meditation that you're going to offer may be helpful to some people that I love and care about. Okay. Okay. Well, you can see it and then you can maybe do it with them and help them. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Did you see Elle's um, message that she would like to also talk? Sure, go ahead, Elle. I didn't. I didn't. No, I didn't see it because I can't see the chat. I'm on my. I'm on my iPad, so I, I don't have any chat. Um, I have no chat. It's okay. okay. It's okay. Hi, guys. Just want to wish <coughs> Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Christmas, all the best all around the world. Yeah. Here in Bulgaria, we still don't have the snow, but it's coming probably. You know, we're in the Netherlands. We don't want the snow. We had it. Ah. We're done with that. We had our winter already. We're ready to move. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, so based on what we were saying, is there anything that you like feel like is it has been a challenge for you that you can? I I had actually with my karma. Okay. Uh, I had actually um, uh, in my childhood a very tr uh, trauma a trauma um, uh, happening that was. Uh, uh, com connected with uh, false accusement of stealing something. Okay. Some golden rings, and I was playing with a kid friend of mine, and this happened at some point. We were there, and they probably they thought they they call out some children, and maybe because I was very responsive and um, and active, they decided maybe I did it, and my mother didn't believe me. That was very. Oh a very big trauma for me because I didn't care that the people thought I did it, which I didn't, but uh, my mother did thought so. So right now I'm dealing with a neighbor that lives under us. She's a lawyer and uh, in her mid seventies mm -hmm. and she, someone is, is sending her a uh, threatening notes, but she decided it's me because she's living, uh, we're living above her and the, the kid is making a lot of noise. It's it's normal. It's a kid, but uh, I don't speak to her because I know she's annoyed from us. Okay. And I get this again, uh, again uh, accused of something I didn't do. Yes, mommy. And actually, she went to the police and uh, wrote. Uh, I don't know how it's called in English, but uh, accusement, official, <laughs> official accusement. <laughs> And uh, it's probably something that I have to deal with it, because I didn't deal with it when I was little. Okay. So, okay. I so how did that, did that, how did that, do you think that, how does that uh, affected you in your life? How, how is that? Well, uh, I don't know. I was fighting with it. Uh, when I was a teenager, I was uh, smuggling some chocolate from the shop just to see how it feels like. <laughs> Like, you know, to, to overcome this uh, false Mama. accusement, maybe just to do it. So, <laughs> but uh, but um, when I was like maybe five years ago, this yeah. friend of mine, we grew up and she came to our karate club where we train children. And she said, do you know what? Actually, a cousin of my mother stole these uh, rings. And I'm really sorry you had, you had to go through with all these things when we were little. But just to let you know, we know who did it. We know who did it. And uh, it was like years ago, but it was a relief for me because uh, actually the truth came out. Yeah. Did that give you any, did you, did you, that give you any healing at that moment? Did you feel? Yes and no, because uh, it was a very it traumatic uh, emotional experience. Oh, I had some uh, accusement from a mother of another child. And she was pulling my hair like a fight. She was hitting me in front of everyone. So it was very, very 
um, how to say, yeah, hysteric yeah, yeah. moments. But uh, maybe, maybe I will, I am. I, well, hold on to that. That's yes. a good one for this meditation that we're yes. going to do. Okay, okay. okay. I, I, will, I will put off my microphone. And okay. Is that your son that's there? It's Victoria, yeah, my, my four-year-old daughter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> say hi. Say hi to him from us. Hi. Hi. Okay. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Do you speak English? Yes, a little bit. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, guys. I, I'm okay, muting. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Does anybody else want to uh, share something that's in the chat? Who's, who else? We have Hunt. Who's who we have? Lana. Oh. Who's that? Who's talking? Lana, you go. Who was? Well, Lana, you, I don't know who's going first. <laughs> oh, that's all right. I, I, can, can... I can wait. I can wait. <clears throat> okay. Who was? Okay, Lana, you wait. And then who was the other person? Okay. Has Lana to be... can go. Lana can go. Thank okay, you Lana so can much. Go. And then... Hi, Karen. <laughs> Greetings. Hi, Lana. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> hi, everyone. <laughs> um, well, I'm doing good. Um, actually had a question with Rocco. He's sitting here and he's full of questions. So if okay. that's okay, I'll ask it to him. Sure. Oh, hey, Karen. It's me. Remember? Hi, Rocco. Hi. How are you? Oh, I'm good. So I have a question. Okay. Which alien is most advanced in technology? Oh, I am not the person to ask that. I believe, I, I don't know. Someone's going to have to help me. I think there's many different, so yeah. many different beings and races and... Pleiadians, Pleiadians are very far ahead. Um, yeah. And also the Arcturians, correct or not? As well, yes, as well. Yeah, yeah. The Arcturians and the Pleiadians. Yeah. 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 I find the Arcturians interesting. I like their language. Like, yeah. it includes a lot of, like, interesting sounds. Yeah, cool. Are you speaking a light language, Rocco, or...? Not exactly. I, but I do like to make calming sounds when I meditate. Oh, that's right. You said that. You do a lot of toning and everything. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> All right. Okay, I guess, I guess he's, he's done. Um, okay. <laughs> that's okay. Maybe we can uh, let someone else go before we okay. ask another question. All right, who was, the, who was the other person I was going to ask? Because I can't hello. see them. Hi, who's that? Hi, Karen. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm sending you love and blessings from Serbia. Oh, great. What is your name? Uh, it's, you can call me Alex. My name is Sasha, but you can call me Alex. I, I'll call you your name, Sasha. Okay, Tasha that's or Sasha? Sasha. Sasha. Hi, Sasha. It's better to call you your name than to call you so <laughs> Yeah, I use the same on the internet, but it's okay. Okay, so okay. I wanted to share my experience with you. If sure, if please. It's go not ahead. going to be off topic. I don't know. Uh, no, go ahead. My spiritual awakening has started uh, on 2016. It was on November. And I had some ups and downs, uh, dark night of the soul. Uh, received a lot of messages from my guides or higher self through dreams, mm -hmm. meditation, even automatic uh, writing. Okay. But then, on April, something happened, uh, and I thought I was going to die. Oh, something was wrong okay. with my heart, or my, I don't know, I had this arrhythmia and tachycardia, and I even wrote a goodbye letter, because I thought it's over. And uh, after that, I didn't receive messages. In May, it happened again, for five days, dizziness, I, I, I thought I'm going to faint. It, it was terrible, just literally like dying. After that, mm. I quit smoking. Two months later, it happened again for five days. Then I quit or stopped drinking coffee. And months later, in August, it repeats. And then I quit uh, eating meat. <laughs> so I eat fish and legit now. I don't yeah. eat meat. And I was, I didn't receive messages. It was terrible because I, I felt so cut off you know and on September I just realized oh my god this was just a, a physical manifestation of my spiritual awakening it was like a kundalini yeah uh, it, it felt like uh, something between uh, epilepsy and uh, anxiety attack 
I even went to a doctor, one and another, third. They gave me some pills. Uh, they found some cysts on my thyroid. But I realized it was just a physical manifestation of something spiritual. So messages started coming up again. I, I, uh, I had once again this relation with my higher self. So I said, okay, universe, I need a job. I want job. So send me a message. And my friend tomorrow, sends, the day after, sends me a message, invites me to come to Belgrade uh, to stay at his place until I find a job and place to live. So I said, mm -hmm. okay, this is it. I didn't go, but there were some technical problems. So I believe I, am, I will go in several days there. So I wanted to share all, all of this with you. And my biggest issue is I didn't finish my uh, faculty. I am 35 and I have one exam left. I just can't take it. It's impossible. It became impossible. So I, I it's six or seven years. Yeah. I have this one left exam and it's terrible. It's everything is uh, related to my parents. They're very frustrated because of that. They live in Croatia, I live in Serbia. And uh, their expectation is only me to graduate, to, to, to have this diploma. It's like something huge and I, I don't believe it's huge. It's, it's nothing, it's just a paper, but they feel different. So I feel stuck and I, I don't know how to, how to get that diploma. I want to do something else. I was uh, an amateur actor throughout mm -hmm. my childhood and teenage years. And I left it and I, I went to a law faculty and my heart was broken, but that's how it goes when you decide to listen to your mind or brain and not your heart. So this yeah. is my story uh, and I can't wait this meditation. I, I believe it will help and me and everyone else. So let me just ask you this quick question. Do you... Okay. As far as like finishing your degree, is that an impossibility now? You can't just go back and take that exam, can you? No, you'd have to I go can, back. And... I, I can. I have this exam uh, in tu on Tuesday. Oh, you have, feel... you are taking it. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. beautiful. I never gave up. That's oh, good for you. <laughs> but no, that's not a problem. That's you know sometimes things are delayed. Um, I think, from my my idea is it's it's good to finish things. Even yeah. if you decide you're not going to use them, the experience that you have of learning is, is usually never a bad thing. You know, yeah. it's, it's never a bad thing. So even if you don't use it at all, it's, it's, it's an important practice in our life to finish what we start because mm -hmm. we, we don't, we, we never reach a goal if we just kind of start something and don't finish it. It's, it's, a, it's an important sort of life lesson too, to do yeah. it. So, and, and it's also too, like, I can imagine your parents, you know, might've paid something for your education or facilitated mm -hmm. you in some way. And it's, a, and it's a respectful thing to them to just finish it when you're talking about one exam, you know? Yeah. So I, I, I'm proud of you for doing that. I think it's a good idea. To, and then you, and then you, you know, you never know in this world, especially, I know we're moving into a, a you know, a, a different dimension and all those things, but there are some benefits to credentials, mm -hmm. whether they're relevant to what you want to do or not. Yeah. You know, it, it does give some, sometimes some, uh, yeah, credence or, or, you know, it, it, it does give some authority. So, but it's also important, like I said, to finish what you start. So um, I, I, I would think that probably the stuff that maybe needs to be healed in you, like you said, you were heartbroken, moving away from, say, acting, mm -hmm. is to find that moment when that really happened for you. Because there may be, that might be a direction you go in. I don't know. It's, it's really up to you what you're going to do. Or, but this idea of, having a goal and not being able to pursue that because you're trying to please others is also a, like you already know what it is, but that's something in you that probably needs to have some closure. And also so that you can give it its place. You can honor it as your teacher 
and you can move on from it. So that when now, you know, you, you'll finish this degree, you're 35 now, the world is still your oyster. You still can choose what you want, but you want to be able to have everything sort of wrapped up so mm -hmm. that you don't have anything pulling you down for anything that may come in the future, no matter what you decide you want to do. Yeah, it just, it became so difficult. I, I, I believe it's some kind of lesson for me yeah. to learn in this life that maybe I should let it go. Because my first yeah. message was, let it go, let it all go. Yeah. And, and believe, trust it. It will happen yeah. eventually. But yeah. I, I feel like I'm stuck, uh, like chained. Well, we do get stuck. We get stuck. What, what age was that when you sort of had to give that up? Uh, it was uh, six or seven years. You were six or seven years old or six or seven no, years no, ago? No. Uh, I was about to, to finish it six or seven <laughs> years ago, but it delayed. So uh, I went to a uh, faculty in 2001. So it's, okay. it's 16, so almost 17 years. It's yeah. Just one exam. It's so um, I'm ashamed, you know, that's, that's a big thing. There, there's no reason to be ashamed. There's no reason to be ashamed. Being ashamed doesn't do anything but keep you from moving forward yeah i know but yeah well there's no but okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, so it will be also but for the physical stuff that you've experienced you know mm -hmm. when your vibrationally changes things no longer serve you and it just seems like right now that you know the universe is just step by step bringing you to yeah. points where you're you're letting stuff go and that's that's a good thing you know, it's a good thing to recognize that that's what's happening. And as you vibrationally, you know, people can also move out of your life. Um, opportunities can move out of your life. Things, doors can shut, but other doors will open. Mm -hmm. You're, you're right. I mean that, you know, it, I'm, I'm glad to hear that, you know, you stopped smoking and, and all those things. Yeah. Those things are not good for your body. Your body is your, your body is your vehicle. Your body is your temple. We, we need to honor that. We came into this world with this body and we need it to function in the best way possible for us. And um, when we don't take care of it, it's like having a messy room. I mean, that's no fun to live in a big messy room. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. So I even thought maybe it's a walk in because I feel completely different, like completely different person than before. Well, you are changing, that's for sure. But you're, you're not becoming a different person. You're becoming more your true self. Yeah, like my higher self. <laughs> yeah, you're becoming, yeah, exactly. You're, you're being more yourself than yeah. ever before. Yeah, yeah. Letting go of all that stuff and with other people's notions of who you should be mm -hmm. and really finding out who you really are. You yeah. Know? Okay, so yeah. thank you so much for this Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay, is it is there anybody else that wants to um, to say anything before we do the meditation? Is there anyone? Karen, if, that? if that's okay, if if no one else is um, needing to go before, um, I just wanted to say that a lot of experiences that people describe they actually um, uh, same experiences I had. So I, I think it's no accident we we all hear. <laughs> And um, no. in terms of the degree completion, <clears throat> but especially lady who had a um, traumatic experience when she was um, a child, I just want, maybe this will be helpful to share something. Um, and Karen, I discovered Roxanne, thanks to you, you mentioned her on, on your Facebook. Roxanne, uh, channeling. She's a channeler, Roxanne. Yeah, Roxanne is my Roxanne. Roxanne. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and it was just by chance that my answer was, uh, my, my question was answered. Um, and my question was that I was playing in my head was, what, what was the purpose of all this negativity um, as a child and the accusations and the, the constant put downs? I just couldn't figure out the purpose that, that it would serve in my life. And what I realized is that it actually laid down the tracks 
and now Roxanne's voice and her, her, her message and her intensity, it's actually the polar opposite of what I heard from my mother, hmm. but it, it goes down the same tracks. So basically the, <laughs> uh, the tracks were laid and I'm receiving yeah. her message so clearly because that's how I was talked to, but I was being convinced of my littleness, but now through Roxanne, I'm being convinced through about my bigness. Yeah. And yeah. I was, it's just so easy to receive her messages. And I think that was one of the, because I, I just, it was organically just already there. Yeah. Already, <laughs> you had to listen to that. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I understand that kind of manner of that speaking can, and yeah, that. Too. Yeah. 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 Sounds wonderful. But, and I, and you know, it's unique to everyone, but to, to the lady who had these problems with, um, you know, with, with her parents, um, it's definitely there. Um, in one way or another, it will come to you, but it, it wasn't in vain. It definitely will serve a good purpose for you. Just uh, keep on seeking and, um, it yep. will propel you yeah. even more. Yeah. <laughs> anything that anything that happens to us, you know, we're all, all of us um, are. As much as we're students of life, we're also teachers to other people. And the more that we become aware, each and every one of us, the more that we become aware of who we are, and where we've been, and where we're going, the more we can also help and facilitate others. And any kind of trauma that you've had, um, I don't like the word trauma because that always sounds so dramatic, but let's just say any kind of situation that you've had that has caused you pain or discomfort and that has eventually become some, some kind of limiting block or belief or something like that, I guess. I guess, I guess a trauma. I can't, I can't get away from the word. But any of that... It's, all, it's for our growth, but it's also for us to be able to have, have compassion and empathy for other people. Because inevitably, if you're on a spiritual path, which we, everyone is, but if you are aware of it and you're actively pursuing it, which we all are here because we're doing that, it, like you, I like the, what you said about laying the tracks. Not only does it lay the tracks for how you will behave, but it also kind of gives you a direction in your life of the things that you will eventually do. You know, um, Christine had a traumatic experience with her animals. So now, unfortunately, maybe not being able to save that one, you know, has propelled her to save many. And, you know, person by person, we can say that the things that you experience the pain that you experience also teaches you what you can do in your part of the world, wherever you are, whatever your world is, whatever your location, what you can do to help heal this planet. Because you can be really sure that if it's happened to you, it's happening to many. And as we become more awake and aware, our jobs, are not only to, um, you know, become better ourselves, but then to facilitate other people in whatever way that is. And it may just be a kind word. It may be just in the way that we raise our children. It may become your actual profession. But any trauma and anything that you have actively, not only once you can heal it and find it and understand it, can also become your pool of inspiration and your pool of empathy for other people, other beings and other situations. So in that way, it's our teacher and our guru. And a guru doesn't have to be always a person. A guru can be a situation. A guru is anything that brings us wisdom or teaches us in any way. So we always honor our teachers. We always honor them because those are the things that move us forward. So what we're going to do, and I don't know if there's anybody in the YouTube 
um, that uh, we missed your question, but but what we're going to do just to tell everybody is we're going to we're going to take a second and in the meditation we're going to find and the people that have spoken have their things that they that they've identified as being little blocks in their life. Big they can be big, they can be little, but um, they happen usually in childhood somewhere. And the reason is, and what, what I said earlier, but in case you didn't understand, is the reason that it becomes usually happens in childhood is because usually in childhood, that is the one moment where the people that you are dependent on because you aren't self-sufficient, you aren't supporting yourself, you aren't making really too much your own decisions. A lot of things are thrust upon you or you're put in a situation where you don't feel safe, you don't feel loved, you don't have certainty. Um, it, that part of you gets a little bit stuck. And anything that comes after, your reaction in that moment is learned. And so as you go older, other reactions that you have usually go back to that first reaction. So you, you, what we're going to try to do is we're going to, well, we're not going to try. What we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to heal that moment. Because can you imagine as a fully realized being when that situation would come up now, how would you react knowing what you know? It's totally different. But there's still that part of you that's the child that needs that love and compassion that it didn't get in that moment. And it, it and if the, the the events that occurred after that happened to you as a child, if you had known what you know now, some aspects of your life could be very different, and some of that pain could be gone. And because we're multidimensional, because we're able to affect ourselves, our, our past, present, present, and future self, it's important to go and heal those moments because it shifts everything. And when we talk about shifting, everything is true, which is what I was saying to Christine. Everything is true. Every timeline is there. So the way that you shift timelines is by having a different past. If you want things to go better, Sometimes you got to go back in the past and heal so that it pushes you into the timeline where that never happened and things can start to shift and move in a different direction. I know that's very kind of everywhere, but I'm sure everyone understands what we're talking about here. So, okay, let me sit up so that I'm in a good position. I've I didn't see like any questions, um, so you didn't miss anything. Okay, perfect, good. That's great. That means everybody in YouTube land is, is fully in control of themselves. <laughs> That's a good thing. That's awesome. All right. So, and the reason that we wanted to do this now is, is I don't know, it, it, I just, I just have had the feeling once we started that this was really what we should be doing today. And, and um, yeah, because 2018 is looming and we want to go into the year with no baggage. We've carried it around a long enough for time. We're going to leave it in 2017. And, and we may even, we're going to eliminate it so that 2017 even shifts a little bit. So, okay. Sit up wherever you are. And if you want to sit, I'm sitting in lotus position with my legs crossed. But if you can put your feet flat on the floor, whatever's com comfortable for you. Put your hands out open like this and put them on your lap either on both of your knees or on your lap in front of you. And we're just gonna, we're gonna close our eyes. Just, you know, move your shoulders and your neck so that you can, you can feel comfortable. And what we'll do is we're going to own, we're just gonna own just to get into a space where we're listening, but, and then we're gonna do a guided meditation and, and you just have to follow along and everyone's going to be doing their own inner work, um, but it'll, it'll be relevant to everyone. So, okay. Just take a deep breath. Breathe in through the nose. Just let it out through the mouth. 
And just let whatever's around you, just hear it, accept it. I hear some kind of moped or something going by. You know, I just hear it going away. And take another deep breath in. And just hold it. And feel your body just relaxing in the space of where you are. And when we take the next deep breath, we're going to let it out in an ohm. And really, when you ohm, make the sound ah, and then oh, and then mmm. And when you do the mmm, put your tongue at the roof of your mouth. Mmm. And what you're doing is you're exhaling the sound of creation and you're bringing it back in. It's having a it's returning into you, returning in. And that is symbolic of formless into form and then back again, because everything is a cycle. And that's exactly what we are. We, we come into this world, into this existence, into form, and then we go back into formlessness and back into the, the one. So the OM is also a representation of that. And also when you, mm, it, it pulls your meditation, it pulls your focus inward. And what we're going to be doing is inner work. So we need to be focused inside. And if you can let your consciousness sort of come to your third eye area and just focus there. Okay. Take a deep breath in. Oh. And as you mm, in that sound, allow your focus, like I said, to go to the third eye. We're going to do it one more time. Deep breath in. Uh... Yes, we just sit here in this after vibration of the sound. We're going to drop our consciousness down into our heart center because what we're doing is an action of love and we want to be working from the heart. So just as you have your consciousness at your third eye, just see it shifting down into your heart chakra. And see your heart chakra the green glowing light. See that just opening up. However you want to visualize it, you can see it as a big sphere of an emerald green light. And just like petals of a flower, it all opening and that beautiful green light just shining out. You can also picture white light coming down to your, your crown chakra, which is the top of your head, moving down through the third eye and into your throat, again, down into your heart, past your heart, into your stomach, your solar plexus, and then down into your base chakra and into the ground, going down into Mother Earth and coming back up again. And that being a, a vessel of information as well as cleansing light. So now as we sit in our heart, our consciousness there, just 
see yourself as you are right now. Most of you are young adults or adults or full grown older people, older, younger people. And just see yourself standing, bathed in your own love light. And at this moment, we're gonna think about each individually, our last year, our last several years, and all of the challenges that we've had. And the things that it's made us ask about ourselves, about our well-being, about our safety, about our goals, about what we believed. Just think briefly over who you were a year ago and who you are today. And how this last year shaped you whether you entered the year with certainty or uncertainty, you made it to the end of the year. And we're about to embark on a new period of time. Not only do we just pass the winter solstice, which is a closing of the year, but also we're about to enter rebirth. And so this is our opportunity now to set our intentions for what we want. But first things first, we're going to go back a little further than a year ago. And as you've identified within yourself, the moment in time where you had some pain or trauma, usually as a child, whatever it was, We want you to bring that version of yourself into this beautiful green light. And if you are able, we want you as a being that you are now to bring it in as it was, whether you were in your room, whether you were outside, wherever you were in that moment, you have the ability to step in to that time, that moment, that now, because everything is now. You have the ability right now to step into that time, but bringing yourself within this chakra bubble, this green light, emerald light, love light bubble, but into that moment. And so now you need to see yourself as that other being as well. So you have yourself that is full grown right now, this who you are in this now. But we want you to also go to the place where you as a child or a younger version of yourself were. And we want you to stand next to yourself. And in that moment, where your disappointment or your pain or your fear happened. We want you to allow yourself to reach out to your inner child. And you will say to yourself in your own words, or our words, it doesn't matter, that Everything is okay. And you are loved unconditionally by me. And you should use your own name and address yourself. So, for instance, I would say, Karen, I love you. And in that moment when this happened, and in this moment when this is happening, 
it's all okay. And that I'm here to protect you. And this will never happen again. I won't allow it. I know the difference. And thank you for giving me this moment so that I could learn to have compassion for myself and for other people. I think this moment and see the moment as it is, but realize that this moment has an energy to it. And know that this energy of this moment is a teacher for you. So say to this moment, thank you for what you've taught me and what you've brought me. And I honor this moment for giving me the ability to come back and to heal myself, but also to learn to never make this choice and to have empathy for other people. And I appreciate this opportunity that this has given me for my now life. And if there were any beings in that time that you interacted with or that were hurt, you can say to them, thank you for being willing to take this experience to also teach me, to give me the knowledge that I need that'll let me move forward in my life and change my nows for the better. Specifically, if there was an animal that was hurt or your parents, maybe they caused hurt to you. You can also thank them, not for the hurt, but for the part that they played. Because you have to remember that they are also beings with choices and their choices sometimes are based on their own disinformation that they have about themselves and their well-being and what they should be doing for other people. But thank them. Thank everyone within this moment of now for being a teacher to you because it has brought you to where you are now. And then say to yourself, your younger self, I am always here for you. You never have to worry anymore about this. And this moment can be let go of now. It can be seen as a learning, but all the pain that's associated with it, it's time to let that go. Because now I have the information of what its purpose was. And I'm gonna take the information, but I'm gonna let go of the pain. You can say, I love you. And I'm happy to have had this chance to come back to meet you. You can do this anytime you find there's something that is holding you back. It's generally something that has happened to you before. So give yourself one more hug. Pat yourself on the head, pinch your cheek. Give yourself a little cuddle. And tell yourself how proud you are of the person that you are in that moment and how brave you were to face it with uncertainty. And for going through whatever it was 
It gives you the opportunity to be who you are now. And now, <clears throat> step back into your own time, this time, this now. And realize that you have the ability to go back or forward at any moment to yourself just to check in, to correct any past issues with love, with the love that you have for yourself, with your knowing of who you really were. So now as you stand in your now, with that part of you feeling better than you remember, because there was someone there stepping in to comfort them, to assure them, to remind them that they were loved. You can leave it there now. And now as we look to your future, your intention to do whatever it is that you want to do, to create the world that you want, to create the life that you want, can be set. And for this moment, pick two things, or three if you're ambitious, but three things that you would like to pull into your reality or move to the reality where that is true. Three things, simple things that will give you direct confirmation that this is really possible. So whether it's creating a job, creating a little more abundance for yourself, bringing in more love, whether it's with another person or just more love for yourself. Just pick three things or two things Two things that you want to accomplish this year that you know that are a part of your future, that you know that are part of your destiny. And if you can't think of them now, that's okay. Later today or tonight or before the new year starts, it's a good time to set these intentions. I know that I will do this. I know that I will have this. I know that I will accomplish this. Maybe it's just finding more peace. Maybe it's meditating every day. Maybe it's expanding your intuition. Whatever you decide, if, if there's no rule or anything, I would suggest that it would be something that's for your greater good and is not so much a selfish good, but more of your, your actual growth because you don't want to create more trauma <laughs> to go along with it. So pick something that's for your greater good. If you picked that, and if you have any doubt about it, you can use your 10 finger technique to know that you can say, even though I don't know how this will happen, or even though I am afraid, or even though I don't believe it quite so much, I know that this will come true. And you can use that technique to get over your limited belief. But you can always come to this still place just to get a little bit more centered, just to find a little bit 
of your own knowing, because this is where the knowing is, in this sort of quiet, centered place in your heart. Before we go, I just want you to see your heart chakra expanding and moving out into the world. And, and let your green light, your chakra light, meet with other people's so that the earth chakra, heart chakra, is also affected. And this love light spreads across the world and out into other worlds and into other dimensions to yourselves, past, present, and future. And just see your love being that which drives you for this next year, making choices based from here in your heart place. And try to start seeing from this place the world, people in it, and yourself, knowing that you're perfect just as you are right now, and that you are all possibility and that you are everything that the divine had in mind and that your journey is another wealth of experience that can only be had uniquely by you. So enjoy it. Find the fun in everything. Find the laughter. Make a choice every day to laugh, to smile, and to be appreciative of this wonderful experience that we call life. So when you're ready, bring your consciousness back. Into your third eye area. and then back down into your heart. I want you to understand the difference from being here and being here. The heart is really where the 5D world is. This is where you will see, this is where you will feel, this is where you will think, this is where your choices will come from, this place here. We use the third eye and the 3D world as a portal to see when we couldn't see, when we didn't know what to see. But now, everything needs to come from the heart. So spend as much time dropping your consciousness when you forget, because in the 3D world, we're, we're in our head. Drop it down into your heart. So we're gonna take a deep breath. And we're going to end with OM three times OM. And then we're going to say Shanti, 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 which means peace, peace, peace. Take a deep breath. Oh. together. Namaste. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. When you feel ready, you can open your eyes. Karen, Pete Andrews had a, a question. 
Okay. But I don't see them on the bottom as being signed on. Okay, well then you can maybe, is it, is it relevant to what we were doing? Oh, here it is, question. I'm experiencing a negative energy from a family member that fling me over in an illustrating way and has, and was drained me and it left me battle scars. Huh. Okay. Well, so I you believe can send an email and uh, we will address that. But basically the same thing that, that you have to realize that people are acting out of their own oh. from where they are and everything is there to teach us. So he will, he will have to um, maybe read back and listen to the meditation and do the meditation himself. So if he's not there, then there's no point really just answering the question. But he can send me a message. Pete, you have my email. You can send me a Facebook and I'm happy to talk to you about it. Did anybody have anything they want to share about the meditation? Did everyone do it? Karen, can I have a quick question? Sure. Do you have any guided meditations uh, for us recorded somewhere that we can? I, I, um, your voice really resonates with me. I would like to <laughs> try more of those. I do have a little problem. Oh, go ahead. You did what? What, where'd she go? Well, the answer is I do have one guided meditation on the internet and we're going to be doing more um, in the coming, in the, in 2018, in January, we're going to start with the class. We're going to start doing some Vedic uh, chanting and sacred sound work as well as guided meditation. So that'll be a class that'll be offered in Human Colony. And then maybe that's why I felt inspired to do this now because this is sort of part of what kind of thing that we'll be doing. Um, so there is a um, guided meditation that I have on the internet called um, I Am That Which Remains. And you can find it on my YouTube channel, which is uh, called Variety of Life, though it, next year it's gonna be um, under my name, but it's under, if you just do search me on, um, YouTube, Karen Newman, you'll see it. And then under one of my playlists is um, about oneness and channelings of Theos. And it's a video called I Am That Which Remains. So you can find it there. Did anyone else have anything from this, from the meditation or any experience? Did anyone feel, did everyone go back and talk to their inner child? Yeah, hi. I just Hi. wanted to say, uh, I think I changed my past right now. It's perfect. It's deleted. Good. Something is deleted. It, it was wonderful. Thank you so much. Oh, good, good. Well, just realize that, just realize that you can do that for anything because we, we are, we rarely have just one thing. <laughs> we always have a lot of stuff and it will come up. You know, our bodies are quite smarter. The universe is quite smart. It brings up what we need to heal as we need to heal it. So whatever is active for you, that's what you need to focus on. I wouldn't go digging for stuff, you know, yeah. but as things become, as you, uh, yeah, as things come up for you in, in the course of your life, this will be, this will be, this will be a good tool to use. And it's something to, to use and, and go back and do and, you know, and it does. They, they say in um, Hinduism that when a when a person becomes aware, that the ancestors of that person rejoice mm -hmm. because there's someone within. Because you can do it with relationships, you can do it um, with family members. You can't do it for them, but what you can do is heal your part in that situation of whatever happened, or you know, and and you can realize that we're all multidimensional so it, 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 there's many parts that we play but the ancestors rejoice because there's someone that consciously can go in and shift things and that's why they're rejoicing because things get healed on many levels you know so it's a really important thing to do 
when it comes up and when it when you find something where you're saying why is this triggering me what is this block what is this thing it's it's related to something and and you might find it's in a past or a a different now a different now life that you have another but it will come to your mind we like we said we wouldn't go searching for things but we would say that um if it's uh yeah if it if it comes up for you then to 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 go go after it and, yeah and go heal it okay thank yeah. you so much yeah christine says You're something okay. uh she's close to me somehow yeah i'm from serbia so greetings to all who participated in this it was wonderful Good. thank you so much Good. Good. thank you lana did you come back she fell away uh yes yes i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> you, uh, what i was hear, yeah you? That, uh, that, that in the new year, we're going to be doing some sacred sound, uh, guided meditations, and mantra. Um, but yes. That, uh, there, I do have one uh, guided meditation called I Am That Which Remains, and you can find it on my YouTube channel. And that's Got a nice it. one as well. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll do that. Does anyone else have anything? You're, you're right. Uh, this is Christine. You're right about um, <clears throat> going into the meditation. Another aspect or another issue from childhood came up too, you know, okay. being blamed for something that I had not done. And it was close to the event of the dog being given up. So, okay. Was, and did you, did you, did you heal that as well? Or uh, is that something you're going to do a different time? I think it's going to take a lot more working than just one okay, that's okay. sitting meditation. That's okay. It, you know, you, it was a, it's a, quite a wound. Okay. Well, that, then, then you have some work to do then. We all do. Yes. We all do. And you yes. can, you can, but that's what, you, you know, I had a, I was doing a, I did a private reading for a guy um, a couple weeks ago and a Theos he was channeling and Theos said something that I never had known before because um, this guy was talking we they, he I, I don't remember everything because of course I was channeling but the, the thing that came out of it which was amazing is that um, there's been times in my life my personal life where I've had interventions that I couldn't explain. And, and, and of course, everyone's like, oh, it was an angel or whatever. But I got the information from Theos that it was me. And, that, and, and this is and that it's not just me, but this is true for everyone, that it's not an angel, though it could be, but you're the angel. You're the one that goes back and heals yourself or saves yourself or brings information that is really important in that moment. That that more self-realized part of you comes back to you. And, and, oh. and that's why I felt inspired to do this. And, I, and I'll tell you what happened to me and that I could never explain and I never in it, but this guy had a certain situation and he, they were asking Theos about it and Theos, said to them, it's you, you are your angel, you are your guardian angel. The multidimensional part of you is that. And who else would be more focused on you than you, you know? Who else would want to preserve you to give you well-being, to give you healing? Um, I, I, it was interesting because we recorded that session and it didn't come out. So I couldn't tell you what his situation was and, but I can tell you what my situation was that, that, that I had the realization about and, and uh, we were both just blown away by this. But when I was about 19 years old, I was driving, I've told this story before, but I was driving and I was gonna go over this big bridge in South Carolina, in Charleston, South Carolina, which is, um, this huge bridge that connects Charleston to this place called Mount Pleasant. It's called the Cooper River Bridge. It's enormous, and it goes over the harbor of Charleston. And there's an exit, that, an exit ramp that you go onto the bridge coming from downtown Charleston. And when you go 
on it, it's like sort of curve. You know, you go, you go straight and then you sort of curve around to the right. And in and, and the right side, there is a big median as you curve because the curve creates a sort of space, you know. And um, so I was just driving a normal uh, uh, speed and, and, you know, just bopping along and listen to the radio, being 19. And um, all of a sudden, I just heard in my head, in my own voice, mind you, at least I, you know, it sounded like my own voice and it was not in a voice that alarmed me or I thought, oh, it's some weird voice. It was just my own voice saying, but in a very kind of playful way, why don't you just slow down? And I thought, oh, okay. And, and, I, and, I, and I was going normal, but I decided to slow down. And I said, no, slow way down, like go five miles an hour, which is just, you know, kind of crawling along. And, and I thought, all right. And right as I got to that space where there was a big median because of the, because of the curve, you know, there's this space that was a big median. I heard, why don't you just pull over and stop? Now, this is a weird thing to say to yourself or to hear when you're going up a bridge, getting ready to cross a bridge just in the middle of a, you know, just driving. But it was such a familiar feeling and I didn't have any uh, resistance to it that I said okay and I pulled over and I stopped <laughs> going up this bridge and the very moment I stopped which I was thinking to myself well this is weird you know why am I stopped here on this median but the very moment that I stopped coming the wrong way down this exit ramp, being chased by a police car at very high speed was a car. And had I even one second later pulled over, I would have been hit head on by this car. And probably, if not hurt, extremely bad killed. And the car went by and the police car went by and I just looked and I thought, huh, well, that's weird. You know, <laughs> I pulled into the, the thing and then I drove off the bridge and I came home and it, it was just a thing. And I, for years, I think, well, I thought, well, what was that? What was that experience? And I'm thinking there was my angel or that was some buddy saving me, but I got the information you know, this is 30 years later, I got the information. It was me. Just your higher self. Or, or another incarnated part of myself that did a meditation just like I did just now. That's how powerful we can be and effective we can be in change. Who else would come back to you to save you other than you? That is a reasonable question. I, I know in myself, I know it's true. I know that's what it is. I know that this is a tool that we have. And the more that we do it and the more we become be aware and the more that we understand our multidimensionality, the more that we can interact with ourselves. It's powerful. It can save your life. It can change your life. It can heal you. So. It's a good place to stop. I, I want to wish everyone a, a merry, 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 merry Christmas or holiday, whatever you celebrate or don't celebrate. I want to wish you from now until the end of the year, bliss beyond bliss, beyond measure, and love beyond love, beyond measure, and joy beyond joy, beyond measure. Let your light shine. 
remember who you are. Remember that we are divine and that we are love. And our goal in this world is just to have the best time we can and to help the other people remember who they are. That's really our goal. If we can do that, we're, we're doing amazing. Find your passion and don't let anything stop you from following it. So. Thank you very much, Karen. Thank, thank you. Yes. So much love to everyone. So much love to everyone. Much um, love to you. It was lovely. Thank you. This has been Human Colony. <laughs> If you're interested in, in getting involved with us, I, and I, I just want to say, I've been involved with Human Colony now for about five years. And Human Colony has given myself and many other people a safe space to grow, to follow their passion, to expand their spirituality, to learn to channel, to learn their truth about themselves, to learn the truth about different things, different beings. I didn't know anything about aliens when this first started. To light languages, you know, I came in speaking a light language, not knowing where it came from, but anything that you want to know, this is a wonderful place to be. The people here are wonderful. Everyone is open. Anything goes. So I would encourage you, if you're not a member of Human Colony, Think about it because it, it's a good thing to do. Human Colony, hucalo.org. The um, Essential Workshop is coming up February 1st through the 6th. It'll be in Sedona, Arizona. Max and Jim will be there uh, teaching galactic Reiki. If you are not doing Reiki and you are wondering how to open up, Reiki for so many people is that thing that will open the door for you. Because once you are activated into the symbols of Reiki, it just opens you up. And so many people, that has been their opening. I know that I did Reiki uh, years ago when I was about, I guess, 23, 24 years old. And it was a, it was a whole different world for me uh, in Reiki. And now you've got galactic Reiki, which is even uh, a more expanded form. Um, so... If you haven't done Reiki before, if you haven't studied or even considered it, you should do it. They do go after Reiki on Human Colony, but they're going to be doing on the Ascension Workshop. Um, so if you feel called or led to go there, you should really look at it. They're doing a special now. It's $278 now and $278 when you get there, but for five nights of great fun and fellowship and hanging out with some very nice people. And for the rest, uh, you can find me at info at about oneness.com. My website is about oneness.com. And um, I have my own YouTube channel, Karen Newman. And yeah, that's it. Love to everyone. It's been a wonderful year, 2017. I'm going to be happy to see the back of it. <laughs> and we move into 2018. So namaste, everybody. Thank time. you so much, Karen. Have Bye. a good panel on New Year's. Thank you. And if you get a chance, the channel panel, the channel panel, 30th of December in Burbank, lovely Burbank, downtown Burbank, California. So. All right. Bye -bye. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Thank you. Happy holidays. Bye, y'all. Bye. Happy holidays, everyone. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Much love. Bye. Thank you. Love. Bye. Thank, thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh, he's so cute. Yeah, she's cute. She was uh, cute. I think she something, was <laughs> You're ready something very important that everyone finds when we come to Hukula for the first time is that we find comfort. And yeah. from there, it all starts. Exactly. This is very, very important. <laughs> okay, much love, guys. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.